Hello, uh, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, someone sent me a message saying he would like to see more tutorials, so this is why I'm making more. Okay, so where we left off was uh, we were drawing a reloading, a reloading bar on the top of the player. Uh, but I want to go over one thing real quick before we do that. If you go to your room window and then go to settings, you'll see a number under speed. This is basically the frames per second. Uh, I put mine to 60, so we have a really smooth result. It makes a whole lot more, it makes a whole lot deal of a difference. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a lot better. Okay, so now moving on, uh, we are going to create the draw script that will make a reloading bar over our player when the player reloads. Okay, so the code for this would be draw rectangle. Draw rectangle, okay. Then uh, next is the x coordinates for the first corner of the square, so I will make this uh, the top right corner, I think. The top right corner. And I want its width to be 64 pixels wide, so 32 on each side. So uh, it's current x plus 32 minus its reload divided by reload time. So the reload divided by reload time will basically become the number one when you are done reloading because think about it okay when reload time no when reload is greater than reload time it's done reloading so basically when these become equal it's done so that will equal one so we'll make this 32 so the bar will go down so it's minus 32 so once this becomes one times 32 it will uh, decrease this number by 32 so it'll, the bar will go back to the middle okay moving on now y will be minus 16 so actually this is uh, the bottom right corner 16 is half the total height of the player so it's the middle up and now this is the top left of the bar so we're pretty much going to do the exact same thing here except we're going to change the plus signs to minus signs and the minus signs to plus signs it's just inverted basically and then the last argument this function takes is the outline it's either true or false so I'm going to make that a false which is zero. One for true. It's uh, not an outline of a rectangle. Now let's go ahead and debug that. Oh, just have Minecraft homepage. Okay. So, we have our guy. Now, as you can see, the bullets go much faster, and the game seems to play a lot smoother. This is because we increase the frames per second to 60 frames per second instead of 30. So we almost doubled it. Yeah, so you can test it out. And now let's try reloading. Oh, that bar is way too big. Okay. Let's go fix that real quick. Uh... we have to work on the Y. Yeah, you see, I should not have inverted this. <laughs> so, it will just be uh, Y16 to Y19. Because, so, the bar will be 3 pixels uh, high, basically. So, let's go debug that again to make sure we did that correctly. Okay. Reload. Okay, yes. Yep, so now we have our cute little bar over there. Now, uh, one thing I want to go over are enemies. Uh, this will be 
a little bit interesting because enemies are usually a little harder to program. So I'm just going to make a sprite real quick. It's going to be another circle, but with... He's red. Okay, red circle. Oh, that's a fail. And... Yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and save that. Center it. Go. Remember to always center your sprites. Uh, well, most of the time. Make a new object. You'll use the enemy sprite. And... What else? Okay, so... First thing we want this guy to do is follow you. So... Gosh. Okay. I'm not sure if you could hear that, but... Nah. That was rude. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but... An ambulance and a fire truck just passed my house. Okay. And I had the windows open. Okay, so let's go add something in the step event. There's this built-in function in GameMaker called MP Potential Step. Basically, you put the X and Y coordinates of where you would like uh, this person to step towards and what speed um, he should go at. And I'm just going to make this the player. Uh, what you may call it, the player's x and y, so object man dot x and object man dot y and so yeah and then we want him to go at a speed of let's make him go slower than player so two a speed of two and check all okay just leave that at one that should be good and let's see how this will work so I'm just gonna place my enemy up here Debug it. And as you can see, the enemy is successfully following me. And the only thing is the pathfinding is not all too great. It's okay, but I mean, it's not perfect. You can't have them like go through a maze, but it's good for just simple pathfinding. If you want really good pathfinding, then I would suggest looking into something called the A-Star. Uh, but GameMaker pretty much has it built into it, so. Yep, okay. So that's done with that, okay. Now we're going to have the enemy take damage. Let's see if we can do this in time. Let's speed it up a little. So we're going to make a new variable called HP. I'm going to make it equal something like 30, okay. Uh, one third of man's health. Okay, now I'm going to add, basically, when it collides with, actually, you know what, I'm going to have it in the bullet. When it collides with an enemy, and it's going to take its health, HP is minus equal damage. Oh, other. Other is a variable just used in collisions to say that the other thing it touched, uh, yeah. Just basically the represent the other thing of touch. Okay, so after that it takes damage. Yada yada. Okay, we have to make sure that when it gets shot, it knows what damage is. Okay, good. And we have to oops, one thing I forgot. It needs to be destroyed when it touches the enemy. So in here just say instance destroy. There we go. And an enemy, we need to make a in the step event say if HP is smaller or equal to zero, instance destroy. Okay, uh, let's go test that out real quick. Oh, 20 more seconds. Okay. Well, I heard that you can make 13 minute videos. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, if you could press the like button, that would be great. Uh, and, yeah. Oh, okay, it works. Done.